Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to have a story time, and I've brought this story called <clears throat> The Otter, The Spotted Frog, and The Great Flood. It's a story by the Creek Indians, and I even wore my frog earrings, if you can see them, that I can wear when I share the story. I like this story because it has lots of neat animals in it, and I love the illustrations. So here we go. The Otter, the Spotted Frog, and the Great Flood. A Creek Indian story. Day one. There were two animal people who lived in the long ago. I like how the book calls it, the long ago. One was a listener, a river otter. The other was honors himself, a buffalo chief. They lived in a village by the great swamp. At night, the frogs sang in many voices, but only one of the animal people listened to them, and that was Listener, the otter. I hear many frogs, he said one night as he sat by his fire. Honors himself, who was there too, said, I do not like frogs. Listener left his warm place by the fire and he went into the wet woods. There he found Spotted Frog and brought him back to the fire. This is the one who sings above the others, Listener said. Why do you do that? honors himself, asked the little frog. I sing the prophecy, said Spotted Frog. Honors himself took Spotted Frog by the neck and tossed him into the fire. That was a bad thing to do, listener said, and he fetched the frog out of the flames. Spotted Frog sat on Listener's knee, and it was as if the flames had not touched him. Honors himself pushed Spotted Frog back into the flames. This happened four times. And each time, Listener got Spotted Frog out of the fire. But after the fourth time, the frog sang out, A great flood is coming! Soon it will cover the land. I sing so you can save yourselves. <sighs> Honors himself snorted. Returning to the meadow where he and his people lived, he thought no more of frogs, floods, or fools. Listener, however, kept listening. He asked Spotted Frog, Tell me again about the great flood. In the time to come, said Spotted Frog, the water will cover the land. Even a strong swimmer like you will grow weary of swimming and eventually you will drown with the others. So you must build a raft, tie it together with hickory rope, then tether it to the tallest water oak tree in the woods. When the flood comes, you will float up into the sky. The rope will keep you from floating away into the forever. Day two. Listener made the raft and braided the rope, and while he worked, Otter Woman came to see him. She had heard of the great flood. Otter Woman asked Listener, What are you doing? I am doing what Spotted Frog told me to do. I am preparing for the great flood. I see no flood, she said. Oh, the great flood will come. 
That is what Spotted Frog said. There is not a cloud in the sky, Water Woman said. Don't you believe me? he asked. Oh, I want to believe you, she said. But Honors himself, the Buffalo Chief, says that nothing will happen. He says not to listen to you. After a time, she went away. Well, then Honors himself came by. I see no flood, he said. What do you see? Listener asked. Pooh! I see a fool who listens to a frog. Listener did not say anything. After a while, Honors himself went away laughing to himself, but soon all the animal people told funny stories about the great flood. They laughed at Listener and Spotted Frog. Listener paid no attention to them. Here's a picture of a raven telling a funny story. I have done what you told me to do, Listener said to Spotted Frog. What shall I do now? Spotted Frog told Listener, you must press bitter grass and moss into the cracks of the raft. Then the beaver people won't chew on the rope and gnaw on the logs. Well, Listener listened. He got some grass and moss and pressed them neatly into the chinks of the logs. Then Spotted Frog told him, Tie the hickory rope around the tallest water oak in the woods. The great flood will come soon and the water will be deep and strong. By day's end, the rain came. The swamp swelled and the rivers filled and waters rose on the banks. In the night, the rain was harder and the land ran with many rivers that formed a great lake. On the high ground meadow, Honors himself gathered the animal people and said, This will soon pass. You will see. But the water kept rising, and the great lake grew larger. Well, Listener could do nothing for the animal people who had done nothing for themselves. He was riding out the floodwaters on his raft, and they, the animal people who would not listen to Spotted Frog, were paddling in the muddy waters. Now the waters ran higher and higher, and after a time they covered even the tallest water oak in the land. The animal people were soon swept away in the great flood, and still the flood waters rose. Listener wondered about Otter Woman, and he looked for her but he did not see her. He stayed on his raft and the rain came down and the waters went up and Listener floated to the dome of the sky. There, his raft stopped. The hickory rope, longer than any in the world, stayed rooted to the oak. Far below in the gloom, fish flew like silent birds through the sunken trees, alligators, and manatees swam through the silence of the deepening flood. The bird people, who had nothing left to hang on to, hooked their claws into the bright dome of the sky. Holding on upside down, the water soaked the birds' tails. The colors ran together so that hawk's brown tail turned red and turkey's dark tipped tail turned foam white. And these are the colors that they have today. Day three. On the third day, the waters began to go down. Spotted frog came by and hopped on listener's raft. Listener, my friend, he said, you will soon be alone in the mud of the new world. Am I the only otter person left? That is so. <gasps> what should I do now? Listener asked. Remember your name. And Spotted Frog jumped off and swam away. 
When the waters went away, listeners sat on his raft and looked up at the land. The sky was gray and the earth was brown. Listener listened. What is that whining noise I hear? Listener listened some more. The whining noise seemed to come from all six directions. It comes from everywhere and nowhere, Listener said to himself. The whining noise did not stop. But after a while, Listener stopped listening. Maybe it's the noise of the new world, he said. That night, Spotted Frog came to the raft. Listener had not moved. How are you, my friend? The world is not the same, Listener said. You will not be alone much longer. Listener wondered about this. When he looked around, Spotted Frog was gone. Wait, I want to ask you something. The whining noise grew louder. Listener shook his head. Now the noise seemed to come from within his ear. Who's there? A thin little voice cried, Oh, my husband. Where are you? asked Listener. Who are you? Here, the voice whined. I am yours. Listener felt something on his arm. It was a person with a long nose, bow legs, and clear wings. Why do you say, oh, my husband? Listener asked. The long-nosed person said, Before the great flood, I was Otter Woman. And I had a dream in which one day I would marry someone handsome whose name was Listener. That is my name. Well, then it was you that I dreamed about. But now, as you see, I am a mosquito woman. How do you live? I drink blood, she answered. Listener thought about it. Then he asked her, what happened to all the animal people? They turned into starving mosquitoes like me, she said. Listener said, I don't really want a mosquito wife, but I am lonely, so perhaps a mosquito wife is better than no wife at all. Day four. You may stay with me if you wish, Listener said. This made Mosquito Woman dance about in the air. Listener tried to sleep but he could not do so with the noise of her voice. In the morning, he bathed in the lake and he was surprised by his reflection. All over his body, there were red bites. Wife, can this really be me? He cried. It is you, my husband, Mosquito Woman said. The next morning, when he saw his face in the lake, he didn't know himself. I look thin and pale, like all the blood has run out of me. Wife, there's something wrong with me. Are you sick, husband? I feel weak, listener said. Oh, husband, I know what is wrong. When I crawl into your ear to sleep, I drink some of your blood. I am always well fed, but you, poor husband, you get nothing to eat. I am very hungry, listener said, but I'm not strong enough to find food. I'll get something for you, my husband, Mosquito Woman said. She dipped her long nose into the lake, and in no time, a fish took hold of it. She danced upwards, whirring her wings. Then she pulled the fish onto the earth. Here, husband, she said, now you shall eat. Listener felt better after eating the fish, but soon he was weak again. Wife, he said, you must have drunk too much of my blood. I feel sick. I will catch another fish, she said. And once again, Mosquito Woman dipped her long nose into the lake. But this time, a great fish leapt into the air and swallowed her whole. 
dragging himself to the water's edge, listener saw the fish that had just eaten his wife. Angry, he grabbed the fish by the tail and pulled it onto dry land. Fish, he said, you've killed my wife, and now I am going to eat you. No, said a voice. It was Spotted Frog. Do not kill a pretty woman, he warned. What pretty woman, listener asked. The fish, lying on its side, gasped. Husband, do you not see? Listener heard Mosquito Woman's voice speaking from the fish's mouth. But the fish melted into the sun and was gone. Oh, my precious wife, listener said. You're not here with me anymore. Husband, do you not like me better now? Listener looked up. A lovely two-legged woman stood before him. This is Otter Woman who watched you build your raft, Spotted Frog said, and look at you. Listener looked at his feet and saw that he had become a two-legged man. Oh, my husband, listener's wife said, you are now like me. We are both two-legged. You are handsome, and I am first woman, and that is what I shall call you from this day forward, listener said. But I must say, I loved you even when you were mosquito woman and you drank my blood. And that is how first man and his first wife, his wife, first woman, came to be the first two-leggeds born into this world. The earth was good to them. So they say, and they were good to the earth in return. And they always listened to Spotted Frog, who, as everyone knows, saved the world by singing. And that is the end of the story. I hope you liked the story, the otter, the spotted frog, and the great flood. Who was your favorite character? Did anything surprise you about this story? Have you heard a story that's similar to this story from a different culture? Thanks for listening. Have a great day.